What's up, 502 Crew? Welcome back to the channel. Ty, Ryan, Nick, back again with another reaction. But first, if you like join the 502 Crew, we need you to give this video a thumbs up. And we need you to hit that subscribe button. And please don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Alright, so before we begin, we have merch. That's right, baby. Ha <laughs> ha! If you go over to Teespring, which is linked in our description below, and it's also on our page, it's everywhere. You just click it, goes right over to our uh, merch, and you can get any color. Any color font, you can get any color type of shirt, you can mix it, you can match it. Ryan, what do you have over there? What is this? This is uh, this is the red with the white? The premium hoodie. The premium hoodie. The red with the white yeah. combo. Yes. Very fresh. You can get the yeah. black font, the, the red, you know, we... we we got all combinations here. That's right. So head over to Teespring and hey, use the promo code 502 Crew. Yeah. And you can get 10% off for the rest of this month. And uh, what a better time to buy a hoodie in the spring. Well, so, it is a little go. chilly today here in the video. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, we're not there yet. No, yeah, but we're getting there. But hey, the hoodies are just, you know, nice to wear around the house, yeah. just comfy. Very soft. Very soft. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so please check that out, guys. We have Mastodon. Mm. I'm not even going to ask Ryan. Ty, I know you are aware of this band, but you don't know really any songs, I don't think. No. Okay. No. Uh, there might be something that plays in us. Oh, yeah, I've heard this song. But other than that, nope. Don't right. know anything about them. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure this song, neither of you guys have heard. So it will be reaction. Fast Done is an American heavy metal band from Atlanta, Georgia. Formed in 2000. Mm. ATL, Ryan. That's right. Uh, it's Troy Sanders on bass. Brent Hines, lead guitar. Bill Kelleher. Rhythm guitar, and Brand Daler on drums. They have seven studio albums, uh, and even won a Grammy a few years ago. Hmm. So this isn't picking a band from a hat. No, like, this, this is a this is a real deal. Well known band right here. Bear with me, guys. Uh, this is going to be a long intro, but I think it's important uh, for these two guys to know the context of this song and this album. If you already know, you can skip ahead. That's fine. But uh, I'm going to give the the background here. So this is from. Uh, their album, Crack the Sky, spelled S-K-Y-E. With an E. Sky. So why is there an E? That's because Sky Daler was the little sister of Mastodon's drummer and lyricist Brand Daler, who I'll mention. The siblings were only nine months apart in age and were extremely close to one another. They looked to each other for support due to the fact that they were being brought up in an unstable household filled with drugs and abuse. Their mother was sick most of the time with arthritis and was also a heavy drug addict. Their stepfather was controlling and abusive to everyone else in the family. Given the awful flaws of their parents, the Daler children bonded together to try and survive through the emotional and physical pain they endured every single day. So that right there goes to show you that they were very close. Mm. You know, a broken household. Then in September 1990, when they were both teenagers, Skye was being bullied by a gang of bad kids. Acting on impulse, she ran home and swallowed a bunch of pills from her mother's dresser. She died instantly. Bran had been tripping on acid at a friend's house, and at the time, another friend had to tell him that his own sister was dead. He told Rolling Stone, I let out this giant scream, my knees buckled, and I fell down. So that's the crack in the sky. It's for that moment you find out someone close to you is gone. Two weeks after her death, Bran got high and went to his sister's grave and started digging. He couldn't acknowledge that she was dead and wanted to bring her back. If nothing else, he wanted to open the casket just to see her face one last time. About halfway through, he stopped and just lied there in the dirt, staring up at the stars. That's when a sore miracle happened. According to his own accounts, he swears that he saw his sister's face in the stars. She told him not to worry anymore because she was in a better place. Afterwards, he ran home only to find that his abusive stepfather had bailed on the family and his mother was doubled over on the bed and crying, and he laid down beside her in what seemed like a night of endless tears. So, man, that is rough right there. He went to his sister's grave... <clears throat> You know, because he couldn't accept her death, you know, tried to dig her up, and then you look up at the stars and you see her face. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm okay. I mean, that that really is something right it's there. It's like something out of the movie. Eventually, the drug use between mother and son became even worse, and both were admitted to a mental institution. Drug addiction followed Brand through his 20s and right up until the early days of Mastodon uh, until his wife helped him clean up his act. He became a Christian and kicked most of his habits to the curb, and he became... Known as one of the best drummers in metal, basically. Uh, however, there were still a lot of unaddressed feelings that had been stuffed down for years. Uh, something inside of Brand kept telling him to write about what happened to his sister. Hence, Crack the Sky was born. Now, this album kind of has like uh, a concept about 
time travel and astral projection and all that. But without a doubt, uh, it's just as much, if not more, about his sister. Bran thought about writing Sky. Uh, he thought that would help him put it into his grief. But instead, it just opened a lot of wounds uh, in the form of a song. Songs that are played every night in front of thousands of people. Uh, and then Bran has even gotten... Uh, uh, scored, it says, by members of his own family for opening so much about his family history. So a lot of them are like, yeah, you shouldn't have been telling people <laughs> this stuff. But he says he has no regrets. Uh, he said, I'm going to keep writing about this until all of the pain is gone. Uh, and he said, I wanted to put her name out there forever so she would never be forgotten. This album was supposed to be my fantasy narrative about me coming in and saving her. So that's just uh, a really unbelievable story, Ryan. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's still struggling with it, but uh, I'm glad that he uh, turned his life around and hopefully found some closure of some sort. Track the Skies, their fourth studio album, released in 2009. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, we are doing the song Oblivion, obviously, uh, and it is the opener. So, uh, and by the way, I would like to say I'm pretty sure, like, every member of this band uh, sings. Has vocals. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think three of them in this song do. So, yeah, let's do it, man. This is Mastodon Oblivion. Oh my goodness. is spicy yeah so obviously uh that part we just heard that's brand singing the drummer yeah. like i said uh and i've always been impressed by anybody who can play an instrument and sing but especially a drummer uh it's not dr easy and a drummer that's actually like doing a lot of things it's not because you're doing two total different rhythms yeah it's so hard and uh and brand is all over the place yeah you can hear <laughs> du -du 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 -du. yeah you know, that's his style yeah. So it's impressive when you can sing and do that. Yeah, this is like, everybody's going like 100. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I kind of like the frenetic pace in the verses. I, I feel like that fits the mood yeah. well. It's living um, fast. Yeah, and I, I like Bran's voice. I flew beyond the sun before. Yeah, see, I was going to say, sky. out of the three voices I've heard so far, I like the uh, third one. The chorus? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously the theme of, like I said, the astral projection, time travel, that's in here. But as you go on, you can kind of see that uh, the lyrics pertain to his sister. Lost love, bright eyes fading, faster than stars falling. How can, how can I tell you I failed? Tell you I failed. So uh, it seems like, Brandon, you know, I'm sure there's some guilt that it's like, what could have I done better to where she didn't commit suicide? In the chorus, uh, yeah, Brent's voice on that. 
just great, great tone right there. Yeah. Um, and the chorus is kind of somber compared to the verses, and that's what I like about it. Falling from grace because I've been away too long, leaving you behind with my lonesome song. Now I'm lost in oblivion. So sounds like to me, uh, since you've been gone, you know, there's been times in my life where I don't even feel like I'm here. You know, I'm just kind of in another world, you know, in oblivion. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's very sad, but uh, there's also some beauty into it, I think, as well, right? Yeah, I mean, especially if you're talking about, you know, the one he's lost. I mean, it's, it's always sad to anybody, you know, to make a song about it. I think it's always, I think, a be- like a song like that, to talk about somebody else that you lost, it's always beautiful because it's from the heart. Yeah, it's, It makes it more emotional. And yeah. I think it, it can, you know, I guess you'd say uh, reach Help out heal. to more people. Yeah. People can, like, compare to themselves to that. Like, okay, well, I've lost somebody before. I can feel what he's feeling. Yeah. Well, I love the contrast. Uh, first is Brand, second is Troy, and then third is Brent. It's like three different styles. Oh, yeah. They all Go. sing sing differently. Yeah, so it's nice, man. I like how they're, they're like, each like each verse into the chorus and stuff, it has, like, different transitions. They like, oh, transition yeah, yeah. done fast. They're going, yep. and it, like, yeah, switches the whole like, song. You, like, barely even catch it, really. Yeah. It just yeah. complete like, it doesn't slow down or nothing. It just goes right into the next thing. Yeah. Yeah, right after the chorus, it's just bam. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it right just there. hits you. They, do, they do it smooth, though. Yeah, I agree. This really is a fantastic chorus, man. It really is. I I, I really do think that the drumming mm-hmm. in the background, man, that just makes it even more powerful, man. I mean, he's just, you know, Ty. I, I know oh, yeah. you know that's nice right there. Oh, yeah. The runs the runs are nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it kind of sounds like uh, not, okay, so Alice in Chains, but not the, old, not the original singer. Like, he sounds like the new singer oh, that okay. they have now. Is it, I don't uh, know his name. Yeah, so Duval. Yeah, he <laughs> sounds like that guy. Yeah. It's kind of okay. like gr- grungy type, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that's what yeah. it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, but it's it, nice. It's, it's just, it's very, very powerful, man. <laughs>
stuff right there man yeah it's good um yeah, yeah the ending was fantastic oh yeah does it help you guys like knowing what the song was about like the background behind it does that did that kind of add to the value oh yeah, 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 yeah. if you didn't yeah. tell me all that I, I probably wouldn't pay much attention to the lyrics yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly probably just wouldn't pay attention to the music yeah and uh just going back to the structure of the song as a whole like i said the frantic pace in the verses uh that powerful you know kind of somber chorus uh, and I like after the uh, guitar solo that bridge. Yeah, those da, slower da, 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 parts towards the end were nice. Yeah, so I was uh, digging them. I just think it's uh, very powerful. You know, sad obviously, but uh, also a beautiful song. Oh yeah, so, yeah, I, I definitely agree. liked it. Yeah, I hope that brand has uh, gotten over this for the most part. You know, obviously that's still going to be with you. You know, when yeah. you lose somebody, that's going to be with you your whole life. But uh, you know, I think you just try. I know it's hard, but it, you know, I think you should try to celebrate oh, yeah. that person's life. You know, once the dust has settled, and uh, you know, obviously he has made a name for himself, and I'm sure that she's uh, very proud of him because he's an excellent musician, uh, a part of a massive band, oh, so yeah. one of the biggest metal bands of the 2000s. Oh yeah. So uh, rest in peace, Sky Daler, and uh, props to Mastodon for uh, this tribute. So it really is awesome. That is the end of the video, guys. Please tell us what you thought about that song. We love hearing your feedback, so please tell us your views. Thanks for subscribing and hitting that bell. Peace, Peace out. out.